In this video, the girls do something a little dumb and jump off our moving boat, and we spend our last day in the Bahamas before crossing over to the United States and the east coast of Florida. In the previous video, we anchored behind a deserted island in the middle of the Bahama Bank. Good morning. Hey, Bucky. Good morning. So I already took Bucky ashore this morning. It's not, it's not really any place to walk, basically just deliver him to the muddy area so we can pee and poo and we're about to pull up the anchor unfortunately the wind kind of shifted overnight so the swell is coming on this way and the currents going that way which is kind of keeping us beam onto the swell which is actually not too bad really we are going to pull up the anchor now you ready i'm ready megan had a crazy idea she wanted to jump off the boat while we were moving at 12 knots Flora worked up the courage to join her and soon they were floating away from the boat. And I know what you're thinking, there's no worry about the props. The tops are a good 10 feet forward off the back of the boat, although Bucky was concerned. Man overboard, Bucky! Freaking out when you guys jumped really? off. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry, baby. We're back. Oh my gosh. Hi, baby. Was it fun? It was Hi. really fun. Hi. I want to do it again. Hi. Yes, it was to be Megan and Flora's last time sailing on the boat. We were going to have them fly from the Bahamas to the United States because of some visa issues. Here she is, in full glory. You like it too? Yeah, Bucky's like, I approve. Where do we go? It was our last night in the Bahamas in Old Bahama Bay and West End, Grand Bahama. There's no need for screaming. It's you, not us. You're out of touch. Ooh. Oh, oh there's, there she is. Park smarter, no park. <laughs> oh, girl. All right, it's a really beautiful spot. There's a beautiful beach up here, lots of stuff to do. It's wind, it's hot in here though. There's not much wind down in here, so it gets pretty hot. But uh, I'm gonna get that one last little beach day and get some lunch. So this is Old Bahama Bay. Um, it's basically the furthest west in the Bahamas you can get. 
Uh, and so it's only about 45 miles over to West Palm Beach right now. Palm Beach, rather. You know, on a nice day, you can bring your center console over here and be here in two hours or less. And then you get a little hotel room on the water. You keep your boat in the marina. Nice little spot for it. It's pretty cool. It's hot right now because there's no wind, which is good because that's what we want. Tomorrow we're going to be crossing over the Gulf Stream. It's supposed to be very light winds out of the south, which is what you want because the Gulf Stream runs south to north. So you want you don't want any north wind at all because then that just makes the waves pile up on each other and gets really choppy, really bad. It can be dangerous. So a little light south wind is what we want. So it'll be a nice day for it. How much did you pay for your nice conch when you got one? So I've, I bought two conch. Uh, one I bought in Belize from a little girl. I honestly don't remember how much I paid. It was already made into like a little trumpet thing. Uh -huh. She might ask for 10, I gave 20 or something like that. And then the other one I bought here in the Bahamas somewhere, it's pretty nice. And then I cut it into one, I don't remember, like 10, 15 bucks. I was gonna say it's eight. Eight, oh. Eight. Is this one big enough, you think, to make into a horn? Okay. All right. <laughs> Do it! <laughs> Is that okay, it? didn't yeah, work. Good thing I'm in. All right, here you go. Bobby, show us how you do it. Wow. <laughs> 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 well. Okay, so pick this one up. Not a bad little. I already had one on the boat, but I don't know. It didn't sound as good as this one. Yeah. This one's a lot louder. Ooh, we you said this sunset cool. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty nice day for it. It was light winds yesterday. It's light winds out of the south today, so it's a perfect day for crossing the Gulf Stream. Uh, the boat next to us just started up their engines. These guys are pulling out over there. I know at least two or three other boats are leaving, so I think it's gonna be a whole fleet of us leaving today. Imagine we're all leaving about eight o'clock too, so. Uh, getting ready to go, it's about 46 miles, 56, I think it's 56 miles over to uh, West Palm Beach. And uh, yeah, should be a nice little crossing. Looking forward to it. So we're leaving Floor and Megan here. They are going to airline over to Miami. It's just easier because they're not American and visa stuff and all that. It's just easier to fly them over and then uh, they'll meet up with us later on this afternoon when, once we get there. Bobby are taking the boat to uh, West Palm with Bucky, but Bucky saw them leave. So he's freaking out that they're not on the boat with us. He thinks that we left them or something. But he'll get to see them in a few hours and then he'll be happy. We just gave him some medicine to make him feel better. Yeah, we just gave him some, something to relax and hopefully about 15 minutes he'll kick in and he'll be okay. He's pretty uptight right now. Yeah, he's not. He's, He's got to fly tomorrow with somebody new too, so that's gonna be really hard on him. So hopefully this the meds will hopefully he'll be doing good here in a minute and see how he does tomorrow for tomorrow. I'm sorry, Bucky. Come here. Come here. Okay. Maybe the girls are that's where he likes to be when we're underway anyways, right there. I think he can see everything, be everywhere, so he's, that's where he likes to hang out. really couldn't ask for better conditions crossing the Gulf Stream. Alright, we're moving along here, 10 knots. Uh, we're in the Gulf Stream now. You can look at our track on the chart, I'll show you how we were just maintaining our heading and then slowly our he we started drifting more northward because we got pushed, we're getting pushed by the Gulf Stream. So now we're kind of crab angled in. So I turned about 10 degrees to port to crab angle into the Gulf Stream, which keeps us uh, moving in the direction we want to go. And we're almost halfway. There's a trawler that's doing seven knots right up here. We're catching them slowly. We're doing about 10 knots. Uh, and we have 30 miles to go or so. It's 56 miles total. We got 30.7 to go, so we're almost halfway. Uh, but I mean, this is perfect. For crossing the Gulf Stream, you can't really ask for much better than this. Just flat water, great conditions. 
for those that don't really know or don't know how it works, so the Gulf Stream is probably between 25, 30 miles wide. It's a current of water coming from the Gulf of Mexico and further south, warm water moving up the east coast of the United States. Eventually goes up the east coast and then wraps around over to Europe. It's kind of, that warm water is what keeps Europe much warmer than it otherwise would be. If you look at the latitude of like London and compare that over to where it is uh, in the, uh, like on the North American continent, it'd be like pretty, pretty much in the middle of uh, Canada. So it'd be very cold for much of the year, but it's not because of the Gulf Stream carrying that warm water up there, which keeps the surrounding land warm. But, so the Gulf Stream is three or four knots, sometimes five or more knots of current moving south to north along the coast of the United States. And so if there's, so you got a lot of water moving this way. If you have a north wind pushing against that current, the current and the wind, you got the current coming this way and the wind pushing this way, it makes those waves really steep and really high and can get really rough out there. So that's why you definitely don't want to cross the Gulf Stream when there's a north wind. A south wind is great because you got wind going this way, you got waves going this way, perfect. I'd say probably a pretty good wind would be a west wind uh, because you know the sea doesn't have time to build up, but you know, south or west, but south is the best. It's busy out here on a good day for crossing. I've already been passed by two or three uh, sport fishers and center consoles going fast, and I passed the trawler going slow, and then you got these guys here. Uh, like that Maris right there, he's uh, over a thousand feet, and then you got this other guy up here, he's over 600 feet. So there's some big boats out here, you still gotta pay attention. And that's why AIS is a good thing to have, I think. And that's the thing about those big cargo ships like that. I mean, you know, they're doing 24 knots, so they're a long way off, and they look like they're going slow, and they look like, ah, oh, I'm gonna pass before them or behind them. I mean, like I was a lot closer than I thought we were gonna end up being, because uh, they're pretty fast. Well, I think they're a little too far away for the camera to pick up. There's a pretty big pod of dolphins swimming out there. I don't think they're gonna come to us, but they were getting some serious air. It was pretty amazing. Almost there, about 13 miles to go to the mainland. Yeah, 13 miles to go to uh, land, and then we got about four miles to go down the ICW to get to our marina, and we got one bridge to wait on, so I don't know how long that's gonna take us, but we got about a little over an hour to go to get to the mainland. So the discoloration there is because the tide's coming out, and you have the ocean water mixing with the water that was inside the canals there, so you can see, see just the different color of the water. But here we are, West Palm, we're almost in. Uh, we still got about four miles to go to get around into uh, into the marina, but uh, we should have plenty of time to do it. Uh, the bridge opens in, uh, let's see here, about, well, we still got plenty of time, 40 minutes. I think we'll make it no problem. We gotta slow down here in a little bit too. We are officially back in the United States and it took Yay! about, I don't know, two minutes to clear customs. Literally, I thought this feels so illegal. <laughs> yeah, so we fill out the CBP roll map. Basically we scan your, they take a picture of your passport, put in information of that, put in information about the boat, where you've been, and then, I don't know, you hit submit and uh, you they will- your passport, kind of like when you come back from the States, you know that little screen that you scan your passport? Yeah take your picture or whatever, kind of like that. So, but, yeah, so I mean like literally they just look at that remotely on the app and then they can either give us a confirmation or they want to do a phone, or like a video interview. And that's part of the reason we sent the girls on the airplane is that not having foreigners on board is just one less thing to get complicated. They so. might, honestly, if we had them, they might have been, you know, I don't know, having foreigners, they might have been suspicious or- Well, plus we couldn't have, uh, because uh, Megan only has an ESTA and you can't use an ESTA on a yeah. private vessel. So. so regardless, just send them both. Yep. Ship right. them off. All right, so let's uh, kind of get situated and I don't know, we'll check out Palm Beach in a little while. Yeah, I want, there's some really good Thai food around here apparently. I really want to get it. It's like a five star rating. Thousands of reviews. All right, make reservations. All right, I'm going to go. Hey guys, so on every weekend video, I answer a question from our patrons and uh, it is a weekend video. So this is a question from Jorge, is how do you manage medical care when outside the United States? Well, there are riders you can put on your own healthcare system, but when you're actually traveling in the Bahamas or the Caribbean and all that, it's actually very cheap to visit a doctor. So if you need a basic medical checkup or 
you know, you get a cut or you need stitches or something like that. It's actually pretty cheap to go to a doctor. It's 50, $75. So that'd be cheaper than probably your copay with your insurance. So honestly, for something like that, we just pay cash. Um, now then there are riders you can add to your insurance. Like Dan has a program and then my insurance has a program where I pay an extra two or $300 a year. And it's like an, a, a extradition policy. So like if you are, uh, uh, in the Bahamas and you break a leg, well, you go to the hospital, they'll stabilize you and the insurance pays for that. And then they will pay for you to be transported, extradited back to the United, United States, uh, for uh, actual proper medical care um so you can pay for that and then so whether that be you know for just something like a broken leg they can stabilize you probably put you on a commercial flight but if it's like you know you're having a heart attack or something like that they'll put you on an air ambulance uh, and fly you home so it really depends on what it is but so thank you jorge and thank you to our patrons uh if you'd like to have your question answered on a future sailing doodles video and plus i do all these kind of videos for patrons you can go to patreon.com slash sailing doodles and i'll answer maybe i'll answer your question on the next video if not we'll do it on a podcast